quality you deserve faster. Call George Sink Injury Lawyers at all nines now. We are excited to announce that the Medicare Specialist is now the 64 Insurance Group. And while we've expanded our portfolio to include other health insurance products, we are still your go-to for all things Medicare. Don't wait until you're 65 and call. Are you 64.com? If you're looking for the... What makes the iCoax Law Firm different? For starters, we've served this community for over 45 years. And we know that every client is unique. We consider you friends, neighbors, and family. We prove it in the way we fight tirelessly for your justice. Let the Icoast Law Firm fight for the justice you deserve. Advanced Technology today. Hey, Jill, what's the matter? Man, this is name change. It's stressing me out. Everyone will know we still specialize in Medicare. Yeah, I know that, but what about this? Are you 64.com? The Marines taught me how important this. George Sink Injury Lawyers can be there to help you through it. Just call all nines. Thanks for watching News 12 on your side. Live from Augusta, you're watching News 12 at 6 o'clock. It's a city full of historic buildings, but some of them could be lost to time. We look at the latest ones added to Augusta's endangered list. Plus, happening now, Columbia County parents are getting new information about new schools opening and others closing in the county. Giving a live look at a pretty packed crowd at that zoning meeting. Taylor Martin covering tonight's zoning meeting for us. Right, construction well underway for Westmont Elementary School and work will start soon for North Columbia Elementary as well. But Taylor, one school will be closing and that'll shift things around. Well, just from reading a few Facebook comments, parents are not very happy about South Valera Elementary School closing, but I did speak with one parent just before the meeting here who, to see if the opinions hold up across the board. It's now a waiting game for parents to see where their elementary students will go after this school year. Today, construction workers were busy on the campus of the new Westmont Elementary in Martinez and the new North Columbia Elementary in Appling, right next to the current campus. Parents will find out if their students are zoned for either school at these meetings, but how are they feeling about all of the changes? I'm actually excited to see uh, the progress that the county is making with all of these new schools that are uh, being updated. Um, I am hoping that we're going to be back at either Westmont or stick at Lewiston, um, but it just all depends on how they see fit for the rezoning. So we had a really good school life while we were there, uh, so it'll be great if uh, we could find out exactly who the admin team will be returning and also any of the staff members that will be returning. That will be really um, great for our students who were previously there and just knowing that they're coming back to some familiarity. Now, not very many parents came out tonight, but if you'd like to come to the upcoming meetings, we'll have more information about times for those on our website, WRDW.com. Okay, thanks for the update, Taylor, and we're going to take one more look inside of that meeting since it is going on right now. And parents, if you can't get out to this one, don't worry. They are going to have three more, one on the 7th, another the 9th, and the last will be on the 14th. Much more news ahead after we give a quick look at our live camera up at the Thurman Dam, looking downstream at the Savannah River, and check in with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale. Look the upper 70s, and then we're talking 80s for the rest of the week. We'll have that full forecast in just about 10 minutes. A grandmother is behind bars tonight after police say the children she was watching ingested meth under her care. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office says Laura Burnett faces multiple cruelty to children charges. Authorities say a one-year-old and a three-year-old ingested the drug and a six-year-old saw it happen. It was all at a home on Avondale Drive in Augusta. That's off of Washington Road near Fury's Ferry. Meanwhile, our next Allendale council member heading to prison after pleading guilty to sexually assaulting a girl, Earl Morrell, was arrested back in May of 2021. Investigators say it happened at a sleepover, but the parents found out two months later. Morrell was sentenced to five years, suspended down to two years, plus three years probation. 
From Sand Hills to Somerville to Laney Walker, all those areas of Augusta have properties considered endangered by historic Augusta. They just announced their new list of endangered properties today. Craig Allison, live for us downtown in Augusta, just outside one of those properties. So, Craig, that one's such an historic Augusta classic, and it's been empty for a while. The old Baptist church behind me has been labeled an imminently imperiled landmark that's fading away every time it rains. It's just so underused. Like, there's some really amazing big spaces down here that just have been empty the entire time we've been here. It's sad to just see them rotting away. An established business of 13 years in the heart of downtown Broad Street, Lucky 7 Tattoo Co. has stood the test of time compared to its neighbors. Once a vinyl store and barber shop now remains still and empty. It's really sad. Both of those businesses have been here longer than we have. We're just hoping that something fun and exciting comes and fills those spaces. It's a similar sentiment a few blocks away at the old First Baptist Church on Green Street, a decay that historic Augusta is trying to stop. They've labeled this space as an imminently imperiled landmark with the walls decaying each time it rains. You'll be shocked at the vacant lots and the cleared lots where there used to be houses just everywhere and there's just a lot missing. Uh, and it, it's been pretty aggressive in the past five, six years. With some visible downtown construction, there's some hope care is on the way. We hope to see it continue to come back to life. Now, News 12 actually talked to the owners, Herman and Hemstreet, back in 2020 when they said that they were going to revamp this old building to give it some more life. Now, we reached out to the owner who was out of town and was unavailable for comment at this time. In Augusta, Craig Allison, on your side. And hopefully Sherman and Hemstreet will be able to save that historic structure behind you there, Craig. Thanks very much. And, of course, that's just one of the properties on the list. A couple more, two 20th Century Homes, the Greenhouse and the Wright and Robertson House. And then the Sand Hills neighborhood, as we mentioned at the beginning of this report, including the 15th Street Cemetery. And some properties are also saved. To check them out, head to our website, wrdw.com. Three years after a controversial shakeup that led to the exit of a Wagner Fire Chief, Mayor Mike Miller confirmed in News 12 Fire Chief David Watson resigned last week. We do know the Wagner Police Department conducted an investigation and SLED does not have an open investigation. Miller said the exit involved issues with overtime. One mom searching for answers after a scary hit and run in Augusta. We have that story and much more straight ahead. Riley. And our cool streak over the last couple of weeks is coming to an end. We'll take a look at some warmer temperatures on the way just after the break. Time and temp. 70 forecast. You can see a little bit more sunshine out there Thursday, Friday, all the way through our Sunday afternoon. Then looking ahead to next week, Tuesday for Halloween. Right now looking dry, but it will get cooler once we get past next Tuesday. Tonight, a mother is on the lookout for this truck. You can see if you look closely here in the corner, a U-turn sent their family van flying and caused it to roll over. And her 17-year-old daughter was behind the wheel this night. The driver does slow down coming right up the street here, but never stops. Strangers came flying into the rescue to try to pry her out of that car. She's okay now, but as Sydney Hood tells us, their story is just beginning. The crash happened right here on Richland Avenue. 17-year-old Elena Parrott's car flipped multiple times before it finally stopped on top of this hill right here. It wasn't long after that her mom got the call that every parent dreads. And it was her, and she was in tears. And, you know, just the, Mommy, I've been in a bad, bad wreck. My car's flipped over. I'm scared. Please come. Her car beaten and glass shattered. So our car is in the middle of the road. None of her taillights worked. It almost was pitch black, even though, you know, her headlights were still on. She had no lights in the back because they were all crushed. Inside this totaled car was her daughter, alive. All I can say is, I mean, she had to have angels in that car with her. There's still something else missing. But for me, it's the, it's the hit and run part. It's just wrong to leave somebody that vulnerable in the middle of the road where even if they weren't hurt that bad from the initial accident, they could be hit. The people trying to respond could be hit. Any number of things could happen. A car is replaceable, but you can't replace someone's life. I may not find out today. I may not find out in a week. It'll come out eventually. I don't want retribution or, you know, 
I don't want the person to be hurt or, you know, anything like that. I just want them to be held accountable for what they did. Let's call that night. Yeah, sure. And maybe the surveillance video will help lead to a yeah, driver. Yeah, unfortunately, her daughter was okay, but certainly something she's going to carry with her the rest of her life. Absolutely. Yeah. Scary for any parent there. A local program is helping women fight addiction. We share one mother's message coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock. First Alert Radar, powered by Jim Hudson Automotive Group. Did you know? Mantras or venues for two thirty nine a month? Talk to Terry. Zero percent financing, plus no payments for ninety days, and zero down deals on any new Hyundai. Talk to me, Terry Lambert. Always committed to quality customer service. Problems with addiction are getting worse. During the pandemic from 2019 to 2021, all drug overdose deaths in Georgia increased by almost 62 percent. And here at home, our recovery programs like Catherine's Way are seeing more people than ever requesting help. Four years ago, Robin says she never thought she would see herself in this picture. I started using drugs heavy, probably around 21. By the time I was pregnant with my last child, I couldn't stop. By the age of 30, instead of preparing to chase her newborn, she was chasing a high from methamphetamine. I was sitting in a hospital bed knowing that my children were about to get taken from me, but I couldn't quit using drugs. I just remember crying out to the Lord, and I'm like, you know, if you're real, help me. She says in her darkest moments is where she stumbled upon faith and a solution. Learned very early on that the best thing that I could do for my kids was get sober. That's when she called Catherine's Way. We do the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, and we pair it with a power greater than ourselves, and we choose to call him Jesus. She says through faith, structure, and the 12-step program, recovery is possible. One of the things that addicts don't have is a schedule. We like to model what it's going to be like in the world. Get up at a certain time and we always um, open the day with prayer meditation. And it opens the door back for reunification with your children. My kids are in and out here all the time. They sit in meetings. They go to, to discipleship classes with us. Robin says her message to others struggling with addiction. A family is possible. There is a solution. Like you don't have to die in this. You don't have to lose children in this disease. Just getting to the point of like wanting different for yourself. A powerful message from a survivor. And if you're looking to get help but worried about the cost, Catherine's Way does offer scholarship programs, but they do not turn away anyone seeking help. You can find out more about them and how to contact them on our website. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. The playoffs are right around the corner, and it's clear that our local footballers are giving everything they have on every snap. So it's time for the Under the Lights Top 5 Plays of the Week. Coming in at number 5, Strom Thurmond and Silver Bluff. Just like Kevin Love, Quan Edmonds out here dropping dimes to Braylon Staley in the back of the end zone. The Tennessee commit had two touchdowns in the first quarter, helping the Rebels win that game and their region title. Number 4, Lakeside and Groves the Warriors are trying to punt it away, but Brandon Grissom breaks through the line and blocks it, sending out of bounds. Playing above the X's and the O's on special teams helped the Panthers come up on top by 30 in that game. Number three, Washington Wilkes hosting Aquinas. On the first play from scrimmage, Jim Franklin's pass is picked off by DeMonte Lester, who takes it the opposite way for the pick six. The Tigers pick up a much-needed win at home, 31-27. to Coming in at number two, Saluda and Fox Creek. Vic Gaines is back there for the Tigers to return the punt, and he is going, going, gone for the touchdown. With that house call, Saluda went on to win their seventh game of the year, 28-10. to and for our Under the Lights play of the week, the Midland Valley Mustangs star running back Trayvon Dunbar had a monster game against South Aiken, running for 313 yards and finding the end zone four times, including this 87-yard touchdown. With Dunbar leading the way, the Mustangs are going into the final week of the regular season undefeated. Some great highlights right there, Dan. Thanks a lot. Students at Garrett Elementary are planting seeds for the future, and today they unveiled a new garden learning space in honor of a couple of staff members who passed away. Students will go to the Austin and Young Memorial STEM Garden to grow fruits and vegetables, and that's not all. Okay, it will sell some of the food, and then they'll learn how to make a profit and things of that nature. And those are some of the many things that they can get from this garden. 
And along with honoring those two staff members, they also say this is in honor of Red Ribbon Week. For the last seven years, the school has earned first place in the governor's Red Ribbon campaign. Every student in Saluda or Allendale could eat for free at school or will get a totally new state agency in charge of your child's school meals next year. Some big questions being considered right now at the State House in Columbia, and they could result in some big changes in cafeterias all across South Carolina. Our State House reporter Mary Green has more. The Child Food and Nutrition Services Study Committee has before it a huge undertaking that could substantially shake up South Carolina's school meals program. But their work started with a single question. If we're doing such a great job right now, then why do we continually have cafeterias that don't serve good food? That question evolved into an even bigger one. Should the State Department of Education remain in charge of school nutrition services, or should the Department of Agriculture take over? After months of meetings and testimony, the committee still doesn't have a clear answer. Some say they haven't seen enough evidence to necessitate a move. If the government's got a program that's working, you better leave it alone, because we do a whole lot of programs that aren't working so good. Others believe a transition to the Department of Agriculture is the best option to support South Carolina students in the cafeteria and the classroom. I don't see, personally, how offloading some of its responsibilities or sending it over somewhere else is going to be a bad thing for our Department of, uh, of, of, of Education and allowing them to spend more time on educating our children. But still others counter the answer to who's in charge won't result in their goal of getting more local and healthy food in cafeterias. Neither one of them agencies will be able to impact an individual district's decision on what they serve unless the state decides to uh, put some things in the legislature. The committee is also considering if South Carolina should offer free school meals to every student in the state. But they're waiting for new data coming out next month to have a better idea of how much it could cost. Though one member cautions that estimate might not be accurate long term. That number you're going to get is, I believe, going to be manageable. But I promise you, over the next three or four years, that number is going to grow exponentially. The committee plans to meet at least once more to figure out its recommendations. Those are due before the entire General Assembly returns here in January. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. And a bill to provide universal free school meals has already been filed at the State House and has bipartisan backing from state lawmakers, so we'll be watching that legislation. Also, watching the weather. Riley looks like it's about to get cooler coming up. Uh, warmer. Uh, <laughs> you got a 50 50 chance there if you get strong, unfortunately. But we got warmer afternoons for the rest of the week. Highs will be in the 80s Thursday all the way through the weekend, seven day just after the break. We are excited to announce that the Medicare Specialist is now 64 Insurance Group. And while we've expanded our portfolio to include other health insurance products, we are still your go to for all things Medicare. Don't wait until you're 65 and call. Are you 64.com? We're here at the Grand Ole. It's on sale. Hey, Jill, what's the matter? Man, this is name change. It's stressing me out. Everyone will know we still specialize in Medicare. Yeah, I know that, but what about this? Are you 64.com? done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. Well, we are hitting the golden hour here across the CS Array. A beautiful look at downtown Augusta. This is actually from our Beach Island camera. We have it zoomed in, and since it's very calm outside, camera's not too shaky out there, but a beautiful look at Augusta. We are looking at temperatures currently still in the mid-70s. Temps will fall into the 60s within the next hour or so, and then we should see in the 50s up until around midnight. Overnight tonight, we will see uh, cool temps down to the mid-40s by daybreak Wednesday. So another chilly start, but a beautiful afternoon tomorrow. We should hang on to sunny skies through lunchtime. 
few more clouds will show up tomorrow afternoon with high temps topping out into the upper 70s. So no complaints weather-wise over the next several days. Temperatures will actually get warmer for us heading into the weekend. We are looking at high temps, 82, 83, Saturday, Sunday. Heading into next week, we do get to Halloween next Tuesday. And I'm sure a lot of trick-or-treaters are wondering if we are going to see some rain. Right now, it looks mostly dry. There is going to be a cold front that pushes through Tuesday, Wednesday next week. So enjoy the dry weather and warmer weather while it does last because we should see another pattern flip head our way uh, just after Halloween. Not a bad looking forecast right there, Riley. Thanks. Our next live update comes at 7 o'clock over on NBC 26. Then we're back with more News 12 tonight at 11. At the CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices to make for you and your family. Hi, Suzanne Lily Penny Michael here with Hardwood Floors and More. Welcome to our showroom located on Washington Road in Evans. We look forward to seeing you so you can discover for yourself everything we have to offer. Hardwood floors and more. So much more in store for you. Hey, it's Anna Christina here inviting you to take advantage of our spooky good savings this Halloween season on our mattress and furniture sale. All of our current inventory of Beautyrest, Tempur-Pedic, Sierra Sleep, and Stearns and Foster will be up to $1,000 off per mattress. As always, we offer 36 months of interest-free financing for all your furniture needs. Two miles off exit 190 on the corner of Horizon South Parkway. Jimmy and his son Alex want to thank you for supporting your local furniture store. Jimmy's Home Furnishings, where it feels like home.